It was by the beginning of the pandemic when a neighbor gave the kids uh, this nice uh, Jeep Willis lookalike RC toy car. But the trouble was that the tiny toy motor burned out twice every time it got stuck in the high grass or in the dirt. Um, it simply burned out. Uh, so it turned out it was actually much too small. Now, having a lot of time at our disposal with the schools closed and everything, uh, we needed some projects for the family to work on. So um, one of the projects we started was modifying this RC car. Uh, I did that with my youngest. And uh, it was, was a lot of fun and it, it also was a challenging project. We, we learned a lot in the process. Uh, so for the next 20 minutes, I'll try to summarize what we've done. Now we have taken it to pieces, of course. And as you can see, the motor is just tiny. And as I said, it had burned out twice already and had to be replaced. Now, fortunately, these motors are not hard to get, but that's not a long-term solution. So fortunately, uh, Banggood jumped in and supplied us with a motor and a gearbox combination uh, as well as drive shaft and uh, a nice aluminum bumper. Well, we got to get rid of the old motor assembly first. This is a mini TS100 soldering iron and I use that for practically everything. Very handy. Actually, I have twice of uh, two of those. And they run off a QC3 power bank. Well, the first thing we have to do after having that removed is we got to take the, the ladder frame apart to slide out uh, the motor holder. Well, it seems that we can only get that out if we also disassemble one side of the letter frame. And now that we have come that far, we can 
slide out the motor holder. I actually have a different video showing how to assemble uh, this motor and the, the gearbox that comes with it. You'll also find that on my YouTube channel from like 2020. So these are three millimeter screws, so we got to widen the holes in those plastic parts a little. And as it still does not quite fit, we're going to file those. You got to be a little bigger to align with the holes in the gearbox. Same thing with the other side, of course. And for some reason, the heatsink was not so tightly fitting, so I had to bend that a little. But as it finally, or as it eventually turned out, we did not need that heatsink at all. So for one thing, uh, we were running this motor at uh, 7.4 volts and even under high loads it does really not get warm at all. Mm. Then again also we, we did not have the space to fit the heatsink in the end because we uh, would have had to modify the uh, center console of the vehicle a lot more than uh, we really had to in the end. So that, that heat sink will disappear in the course of the video. Apart from that, it fits nicely into the available space.
And again, a reminder, if you assemble that gearbox and motor assembly, do not forget to grease it up properly, because otherwise uh, the, the gears will grind down fairly quickly. As it also turned out in the process, I had to open uh, the rear axle and turn it round so uh, so it will so the wheels will go in the right direction. This is a wonderful drivetrain assembly here from uh, that, that Banggood delivered. And reassembling the bearings for for the rear axle that also is a bit of a pain but it'll work out in the end We had to assemble and disassemble the vehicle several times and as it turned out uh, the, the plastic um, the plastic um, wore out where we had to put the screws in so eventually and uh, in one place or another we had to put in a uh, super glue to um to fix the treads And as this is a four-wheel drive, we have to attach the front wheels just the way that we have to have done with the with the rear wheels here, the whole drivetrain. One more thing, once you have it all set up, it does make a lot of sense to use some Loctite to fix the screws because they keep falling out from all the vibration.
Next thing we got the solder the leads back on to the new motor. Fortunately they are compatible voltage wise and the electronics of the remote control does easily survive the 7.4 volts while it's uh, in its original state it's just like four point something volts from a um, nickel metal hydrate pack and we have of course replaced that in the long run with a, a 7.4 lithium ion pack which also gave it a much longer time to play with. Okay, so I touched the wheels and that was that. But then we come to a harder part, which is fitting the, uh, the center console over the now a lot bigger motor. And you will see that in a second. That was a bit of a challenge, but eventually we sorted that out as well. With a bigger motor needing more space, we have to gut out some of the non-functional parts here. And even take out part of the center console. Not a huge part. Reassembling does take a bit. There's an awful lot of screws, but it holds it together quite well. So next we got that really beautiful aluminum bumper with, with all the nice details, the, the, the chuckles and, and that tiny screws. Really very nicely made. And what I have edited down here to like 20 something minute in reality took us a couple of weekends and some evenings to do. Eventually we learned a lot and figured all out um, because we, we are not, not really into RC car building that, that, that whole thing is a world of its own and that was one of our first steps into it. We've done a little more uh, work on RC cars since then because it's, it's an enjoyable hobby and 
uh, there's also a lot to learn about uh, about how things work. Yeah, a lot to learn and practice also for the young folks, but not only for them. Actually, if you look at the center console here, you can see the part that we had to take out to accommodate the motor. So that's our final touch here. So first thing of course we did was try it on the grass and see if it's still gets stuck, which it doesn't. It's not very fast, but very powerful, the way that we've built it. And does not shy away from water. So that was a fun project. <laughs>